Hello everybody, today we're gonna to talk about hardware in Solana, especially how you can uh, take Solana to control hardware and how you can use hardware to control a smart contract. So the first thing we're gonna learn is what DPIN actually means. Then we're gonna learn how you can control a Raspberry Pi pin with uh, via a smart contract and Solana pay QR codes. Then I'm gonna show you how you can build your own vending machine or a bar or a cocktail mixer. And then we're gonna look at the Laravan network, which is a network that is provided by Helium and uh, it has a very high range and low power consumption. So let's look into this. So what means DPIN actually? Um, I found a definition of it. It's a new way to build and maintain infrastructure in the physical world. And what it basically means is that there's a network and a bunch of people provide some kind of functionality and kind of hardware or a network or whatever. And these people get paid by um, microtransactions on the blockchain. So, and a few examples that we already have on Solana is the Helium network, for example. Helium provides um, a LoRaWAN net. I can explain later what this is. And a cell service, uh, which is already available in Miami. So you can get a mobile cell service for only $5. So that's an amazing project. And then there is a project called Render, which lets you rent out your graphic card to other people for usage. So they pay you a little bit of money and they can use the processing power of your graphic cards. Then there is a project called HiveMapper, which is also super interesting. How it works is um, you have a little camera in front of your car, you drive around and you send out the map data that you are collecting while you are driving. So it's a great way for people like um, Uber drivers or taxi drivers or any way people who drive a lot to make a little bit of money. And then people can buy this map data and use it. And this is how the people get paid. So this is how the economics of these networks work. The same for the Helium service is like you have your hotspot at home, you provide coverage for your area and then you get paid for the people who use it. Then there's another project that's currently being built for Hyperdrive is called Shaga, which lets you rent out your gaming PC to other people to use. And then there's a nice project which is called Katzentracker U, which is uh, German and means cat tracker. And they have like tiny LoRaWAN devices um, to track cats, bikes, uh, cars, etc. So you can already see there's a bunch of cool LoRaWAN stuff here, which we'll uh, come to later. But first, let's see what, um, what would be the hello world of uh, hardware integration with Solana. So uh, one of the examples we built is uh, how you can control a Raspberry Pi with Solana Pay QR codes. Here you can already see there's a little QR code here and there's a Raspberry Pi and an LED. And uh, all you need for this is a Raspberry Pi. Then you use the JavaScript package. Uh, it's called on-off. And then you have a WebSocket connection and then you use these Solana Pay QR uh, codes to change the state on chain. And now I'm going to quickly show you how this works. So this is the repository for the deepen examples. And we're now going to look at the first one, the LED switch. And the LED switch looks like this. So uh, here's a little video of it. So we scan this QR code, a transaction pops up on your phone, and the LED switch is on. And then you can scan another QR code, and the LED switch is off again. And yeah, in this example, here you have first have the hardware requirements, then you have the setup of the Raspberry Pi, then here you can see exactly how you need to um, put the cables in. So I have it here as well. And so basically you connect um, one to the ground and one to pin 18. And then uh, in the Raspberry Pi, how it works, it runs a JavaScript on it. And it listens to the account of the on-chain program that is changed by these QR codes. And whenever the value is off, then it switches this little pin here, the pin 18, um, off, so there's no power, so the LED is off. And if you scan the QR code, then um, the transaction is signed, the state in the program changes, and then the Raspberry Pi listens to it and sets this uh, pin 18 to true. So this is a nice um, way how you can um, control hardware with the Solana blockchain, actually. Um, I'm going to quickly show you the program, because the program is very simple, actually. It's an anchor program. So it's a program written on Solana and it has this switch function here. And whenever this one is called, it switches the account to on or off. And then this is a script that will run on the Raspberry Pi. So you just put it on the Raspberry Pi and start it from there. And here you can see it's using this on off JavaScript package. It imports the anchor program IDL here. 
And then here it uh, loads the account, the LED switch account. And if it's true, then it switches the LED on and otherwise off. And then if you use connection.on account change, this means that there will be a WebSocket connection to the RPC. And whenever this account changes, we will get an update. So like this, we can, whenever the QR code is scanned, it will automatically pick it up on the Raspberry Pi. So this is the first example I wanted to show you. And the second one is um, the Solana bar. So it's very similar to the first example. It's also using a Raspberry Pi. And here you can already see there's a pump involved now this time and a little nine volt block. And then here on the right side, we can see the final product. So you, all the Raspberry Pi and the hardware stuff and the power bank is stuffed into this little chest. And only a cable goes out and goes into this teapot here. And when you scan this QR code, it will activate the pump for a certain amount of time. And there will be coming some wine out of this, um, out of this uh, beverage container here. And then, um, yeah, you can drink it. And now I'm going to show you how this example works. Um, it also comes with this app here. This is a Next.js app, which you can very easily start by going into the app folder and typing yarn dev. And now if I scan this QR code here, it will actually um, create a new receipt. It puts it here into this list. And the Raspberry Pi has a different, a little bit of different script this time. It listens for these receipts. And so now I approve this. We can see this uh, is turning green. And now I have another receipt here on the chain. And the Raspberry Pi is listening for these receipts. And whenever there is a new one, it switches on the pump for five seconds. And afterwards, it calls the same program and says, hey, this, uh, this um, order has been delivered. And then he sets the value to true. Yeah, and like this, you can uh, build all kinds of things. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a nine volt pump, but you can, there's many things that you can attack, uh, attach. So there's, for example, this uh, solenoid here, which also has a cable, so you can switch this on and off and have like a water flow if you want to water plants, for example, in your garden. Or there's a little motor that you can attach. And um, these motors you could, for example, use to control a car. Um, and then you could use Solana Pay QR codes to control this car and drive it around. Or here's another one of these pumps that you can use. Um, then you can, for example, build yourself a decentralized bar where like lots of different liquids are poured into a glass and then you have a cocktail. <clears throat> and yeah, now let's come to Lorevan. Um, because this Raspberry Pis, um, they are really nice. So, um, but they have the problem that they have a quite high power consumption. So even if you attach it to a power bank, you only have like a um, few hours or maybe uh, one or two days of um, power for this thing. But there's another thing which is called um, LoRaWAN sensors. Let me see if I can find mine here. So this is a, a, a LoRaWAN sensor. And these LoRaWAN sensors have very low power consumption. So here's two batteries in this, uh, batteries in this and this uh, will hold for up to five years. And yeah, so LoRaWAN is a decentralized network provided by Helium. So there's a bunch of people in your city probably already, which have these uh, Helium hotspots in their houses. And they are actually getting paid for providing this coverage of network. They call it uh, proof of coverage. And um, people pay for data credits. So you can buy 1,000 data credits for, I'm not 100% sure, maybe a dollar or something. And then they burn some NHT tokens and the people uh, get paid for providing this coverage. And everyone can just use it. This is the coverage, how, it's, um, how it was today. So you can see Europe and the United States are already very well covered. And also some parts of China and India and so on. And yeah, the coverage is becoming bigger every day currently. And yeah, it has uh, super low power, it has long range, it has deep indoor penetration. It's actually running on a license free spectrum uh, below one gigahertz in the megahertz spectrum. And um, yeah, everyone can use it. And it's secure because these, uh, the data stream is actually encrypted. And uh, here you can already see where it ranges in the different networks. So on the top left, we have the Wi-Fi. Then on the top right, we have uh, 4G and 3G. And on the bottom right, we have um, the LoRa network. So it has a high, very high range, but it has a very low um, data throughput. So you can, um, 
when I open the sensor, it just sends like a few bytes to the next hotspot and then it, they arrive in the Helium console and then I can use the data of the sensor. Um, so you can't use it for uh, streaming something, for example, or for uploading and downloading lots of data, but it's very well suited for having sensors, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, all kinds of sensors, distance sensors, and so on. He already said it's like in this free sub gigahertz um, frequency spectrum. And uh, it's quite funny how the, uh, f um, the modulation of the frequency works. It's kind of like uh, what uh, bats and dolphins do in nature. So it's like this chirping. So here you can see like uh, whenever the sensor wants to send something, what it does is it does uh, eight chirps, <clears throat> uh, eight up chirps, and then two down chirps. And then it's allowed to send this data to the hotspot. And yeah, now I'm going to show you this uh, LoRaWAN sensor, how it works. So this is the um, Solana bar example here. So it's scanning this QR code. Here's the CEO Raspberry Pi in the box. Then we scan this. And as soon as the transaction is approved, the, um, the pump pumps the wine into the glass. There we go. And this is how the LoRaWAN sensor works. So here you can see. Uh, in the video, I, uh, I open the sensor. This means the sensor sends its data. Hey, I'm now open to the next Helium hotspot. Then it arrives in our Next.js uh, API. And from there, I can then do whatever I want with it. And in our case, what we do with it is we are opening um, the chest. So this example is a LoRaWAN chest. And here we can see this is the program. So we have the switch instruction, which says, hey, the chest is now open or closed. And then we have the loot instruction. So when we scan the QR code in the chest, then um, we get uh, the in, uh, what is in the chest. We can loot with our phone with the Solana pay transaction request. But um, if the chest is closed, then here we can see then the program will panic. So we will not be able to uh, scan it anymore. So it will only work actually if the chest is physically open, we are only then allowed to loot the chest. So, and um, I, uh, let me quickly show you the API for that. It consists of two scripts. There's a sensor downlink. And this means whenever the uh, our Helium console, here you can, in the Helium consoles, you can register these sensors, then you can plug it into a decoder and then you can uh, have an HTTP webhook which calls your API. And here we can see as soon as the um, console calls here our post request, what we do is we have a key pair here in the, um, in the browser saved. And then we um, add a instruction to switch either the chest account to true or to false. And then in the program, it will always check, hey, am I allowed to loot or am I not allowed to loot? And yeah, they can find the whole documentation of this uh, in the repository Solana Deepin examples. There it's uh, very detailed described what all the different um, classes do. Um, so I will not go too much into detail here, but if we loot the chest, we add a transfer instruction and we add the loot instruction. And um, yeah, we are only allowed to loot the chest when the chest is actually open. And yeah, now I would like to go a little bit into some brainstorming with you guys. So let's uh, see if you find some good deepen ideas. So one thing that you could do, for example, is you could have um, a bunch of LoRaWAN distance sensors, put them all around the city in the parking spots, and then check where cars are. And then you have an app which shows uh, where free parking slots are. And then you sell these to um, this app information to other people who are searching for parking lots. So this would be very helpful for me because sometimes I was driving around for uh, half an hour uh, in the night to find a parking spot. Then you could use it to can ha could have a light sensor in rooms and offices, for example, to check if, if it's occupied or um, to calculate rent, for example. Then you can also have downlinks. So um, when the sensor sends its data out to the network, it's called uplink. And when the network sends data to the device, then it's called a downlink. So you can also write a script, for example, which controls one of these sensors or one of these um, one of these things, for example, this is a, a cube cell. So it's a very tiny um, sensor, which can also listen to LoRaWAN signals.
And then you can, uh, with these, you can then control like a little motor again or an LED or something. So you could also build a vending machine with LoRaWAN, for example. Or you could control a car or a drone with it. And um, another thing you could do is you could have a live stream, like you build a few robots that are controlled by QR codes or LoRaWAN sensors. And then, uh, yeah, you let them fight each other. Or you could have a live stream where people can scan a Solana Pay QR code to feed a hamster or to let a piano play or whatever like this. Then you could build, um, which would also be very nice, uh, a smart package. So you have like a tiny um, GPS tracker or a LoRaWAN tracker in the package. And then when it's sent to someone, then they can immediately see when it will arrive. So that would be really cool. Or you could have a warning system for catastrophes like fire, humidity, earthquakes, and then have a warning system for the government. Or you could build a vending machine. I think I said this already, but um, you would scan a QR code and it would uh, open a, um, start a stepper motor, which starts one of these spirals, and then um, what you want to buy falls out. Or you could build a decentralized renewable energy system where people have like their solar panels on the roof and they have produced too much energy and you have some kind of sensors on it and then automatically distribute the uh, energy in kind of some token format from people to people in the village. So this would be really cool. It's a challenging one, but this would be very interesting. And then you could build a bunch of games within it, of course, as well. So you could have, for example, a bunch of sensors in a, in a city and people need to switch these buttons at the same time. Or you could have these uh, LoRaWAN chests in multiple places and then people need to... Then you have a high score who collected the most of these chests. Or you could have robot wars. Like I said already, you have a bunch of robots uh, fighting against each other. Or you can have a, um, like a big wall and then... Um, People need to press buttons, scan QR codes, uh, throw balls somewhere. And all these are collected by sensors and controls um, data in a program. And then you pay out rewards, for example. Or a decentralized Pokemon. Because sometimes uh, in these uh, Pokemon collecting games, it's difficult to figure out if the people are actually at the position where they are. But with LoRaWAN sensors, you can be sure that they are at the right position. Or uh, you could uh, build a coin doozer game. So that would be also really fun. You like have a QR code on the machine and you pay uh, one USDC, for example, a coin falls in and then it falls out. And in the bottom you have sensors again, which check all the coins and then you pay automatically pay out the rewards again. So this would be also really cool. So yeah, I'm very excited to see what you guys are building with it. You can find all these examples and uh, with a bunch of documentation and videos and so on in the Solana Deepin examples. And yeah, please uh, comment below on the video uh, if you have any other ideas uh, what we could build with this. And yeah, have fun and good luck with Hyperdrive if you're participating. Bye-bye.